All right. Well, welcome everyone. This um, is an exciting day. This is going to be our very first five for five. Um, something that we, we want to do to showcase and spotlight our correctional leaders across the United States. We're also going to talk to like associates of the Correctional Leaders Association, um, our corporate partners, and just a variety of stakeholders and VIPs across the US. Um, but I'm honored to have the very first one be our Correctional Leaders Association elected president, Ann Presythe. A uh, very quick intro to Ann. I, Ann, I say this behind your back all the time, and so I, I, I'm now publicly going to say it to your face, but um, my very first time meeting you was when I was the commissioner of Interstate Compact for Idaho, mm -hmm. and um, kind of, uh, you know, as you know, that, 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 that commission was, has such a culture, has such a rich culture, and, and all of us were very close, and some might even say uh, maybe like a good old boy um, uh, outfit at one point. And I remember, honestly, I remember meeting you for the first time. You were the deputy compact admi uh, administrator, I think, for North Carolina. And when you walked away from this group, um, all of us were just like, oh man, like this, Anne is going to take this place by storm. And you, in fact, did. Like you wasted no time in rising up through the ranks of leadership. Everyone loved you and you took over that organization. And I just think it's a credit to you and your leadership and how lovable you are, but also um, just what a great leader you are. And so it's, it's really uh, my pleasure to kind of talk to you today and ask you a few questions. And, uh, but that's my very first impression of you when I met you as you walked away and we, all of those good old boys were like, oh boy, man, we're in for it. She is gonna take <laughs> over. So it was awesome. Thank so. you. It's so exciting to be here and to participate in this. I'm excited to see where this goes. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes too. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, let's figure it out. Let's do it. Let's jump into it right now. So okay. ver very first question. Um, did you always know that you were going to work in corrections? And, and if the answer is no, like how did you find yourself in a role like this? So, of course, the answer is no. I was going to be a veterinarian and then I was going to be a marine biologist, but being in a boat in the ocean and science were not really my thing. So, uh, I got married and my father in law was a state employee. And I moved to a very tiny town and he told me, You need to get on with the state. It'll be the best job you ever had and you'll have security. Well, my parents were not state employees. So he connected me with a probation parole officer in Sampson County, North Carolina, and I was with her one day and absolutely adored what she did and the range of people that she came in contact with. And I mean, it was a state job, it was money, and I liked what it was, so I thought, why not? And uh, it took me a year, but I finally got on and would have never, in a million years thought that I'd be sitting as director of corrections in Missouri, much less the Correctional Leader Association president. So career choices are um, a real opportunity. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. And you know what? I, I should have, you know, I'm not a very good interviewer. Um, um, I, I should have told the audience, if they don't already know, that Anne is not only the director uh, of the state of Missouri Department of Corrections, but she's also, and I think I mentioned this, the elected president of the Correctional Leaders Association. Um, but yeah, but anyways, oh, that's, that's great. That's a great story. And, and uh, for those of you, though, again, that don't know, Anne really came up through the probation and parole track, um, really kind of cut her bones um, in that area. And, uh, and all of that she brings to the table now as she's now, again, the CLA president. And we talk a lot about community supervision, probation and parole. It's one of the pillars, I think, of her vision for CLA is that we become way more acquainted with community corrections. So that's perfect. Um, so Anne, uh, another question for you. Curious about, um, you know, you've obviously, you have experienced a lot of success in leadership roles and coming up through the ranks and, and working all the way to the top of a very large system in North Carolina. And now of course you're the director of Missouri. Uh, as I mentioned before, you took over interstate compact on a national level. And now, of course, you're the elected president for CLA. Um, surely there's had to have been, you know, uh, multiple people in, in that trajectory 
that have influenced you. Uh, I'm curious if you, you know, off the top of your head, if you know, or if you can speak to some of those people that have influenced you in a positive way to have you be the person that you are today. Yeah, you know, that question, I mean, you, I can't help but because of the first impression that I made, my first thought was, God, that sounds like my mom. And so I would totally say that um, I got so much of who I am today and that if you're gonna get involved, get involved. Don't just sit on the sidelines, get involved. I got that from my mom and I got, I mean, anybody who knows me knows I am a totally glass half full kind of girl. And I see the possible in everything that's impossible. And I got that from my dad. When I think about this journey in corrections, the first person I think about is Sherry Pilkington. And I don't know if you remember her from North Carolina, but she was the mother of Interstate Compact. And she was also one of the few women leaders in North Carolina. And Sherry always had a smile on her face. She was a fireman because she put out every fire that ever came up, but she did it with grace and humility. And she really, was what I wanted to be as a leader. And I can tell you that I never set out my path to say that I was gonna be X one day, whatever X was. I just literally maximized on so many opportunities and I had so many great people, David Geis, Glenn Mills, um, you know, a lot of people that that I came in contact, that I learned things I didn't want to do, but then a lot of things that I learned, yeah, I do want to do. So, I mean, it's, it's been a, it's been a neat ride. That's cool. That's great. Yeah. Great answer. Great answer. Um, well, I know that like every time I'm around you, you're always like putting a spotlight on Missouri. And I know you love this, that your, your team and the state and all that you guys are doing. And I know you felt the same way about North Carolina and still feel the same way about North Carolina. This question is gonna be a little non-work related. As you know, I'm a foodie, I love to eat. And so I'm just really curious if you could tell me and the others that are watching, like where's your go-to place to eat in the state of Missouri? And where's your go-to place to eat in the state of North Carolina? Okay, so the first one will probably be a surprise. The second one probably will not. So the first one is Theo's um, Pizza here mm -hmm. in Missouri. They have the best gluten-free pizza. They have a Greek salad that is fabulous. The atmosphere is awesome, and they make great margaritas. So it's like check, 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 check for me. For North Carolina, it's barbecue. And Eastern North Carolina barbecue doesn't get any better than a, um, whether it's home cooked, because a lot of guys in North Carolina know how to cook it. But I like that vinegar based barbecue, but there's a place in Lexington that makes a red vinegar coleslaw. Oh my God, it is so good. <laughs> oh my God, it's so good. We gotta go to North Carolina sometime, Kevin. Let's you make it happen. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. do you remember what that place is called in North Carolina? Um, if not, I'll, I'll look it up. It's got a little pig on it. Um, well, Kepley's is the one of them. And then I'll have to think of the other one, but it's right there in Kernersville. All right. I'll get I it. Like I'm doing a commercial. <laughs> no, I know. I know. I'll, I'll get that information and then I'll put it in the, um, like the comments of this, uh, of our YouTube thing. It's Clark's. Oh, Clark's, Clark's okay. Barbecue. All right. <laughs> so Theo's in Missouri, Clark's Barbecue yep. in North Carolina. Okay, perfect. Yep. Awesome. Um, all right. So tell us a little bit about some things that you're uh, like super proud of going on in the Missouri Department of Corrections right now. I know there's probably a hundred things that you could speak of, um, but maybe if you could just pinpoint one or two things that uh, that's happening right now that, you know, that you'd like people to know. So, you know, we're in the midst of the, the vaccine brewing for COVID. And I would say that how our staff have managed during COVID is the first thing. I mean, we are at an all time high with vacancies for correctional officers, but our other staff 
in our facilities and even probation parole staff from the community have stepped in to help fill some of those roles. So I'm extremely proud of them. I'm also really proud of probation and parole because they have gone virtual. We took what was gonna be a three year plan for sending them out of the office into the community and working from home and did it in 60 days. And the technology is not the greatest, but they have been so innovative and so creative. Uh, and with COVID, they've done like drive through, drive up visits, and they've just taken on a tremendous amount. And um, I'm just so very proud of what they've done and the flexibility everybody's had during COVID. That's really cool. That's really great. Yep. Awesome. Love that. Love that you've uh, pinpointed something that, as you know, I mean, all of us can really struggle with change. And, um, and I just think you just described perfectly that um, those that are actually just doing the bulk of the work, those frontline officers. Um, and I know you say this all the time, whether you're talking to folks back in DC or folks internally to CLA, I mean, I just know your passion about making sure that every one of our staff members, probation and parole officers, correctional officers, all the way on up are considered first line uh, responders. Yep. And, um, and so that's awesome. Yeah, thank you for, for you know, describing that. Okay, I've got one question for you. One last question for you. Okay. Um, you know, you've got one of the best Southern accents in all of CLA. And uh, I'm just curious though, if you didn't have a Southern accent, which accent would you have or choose and can you demonstrate it to the people watching? Oh God. Okay. So first of all, I don't think that I have an accent. I think it's other people. <laughs> yeah. Clearly I get reminded that it must be me. Um, but I am a sucker for an Australian accent. I love an Australian accent. And I cannot do it at all. The only yeah. thing that I'm really good at is like Charlie Brown's teacher. Oh. Mwah, 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 mwah. I mean, that's something <laughs> I can do. <laughs> but I'm good at her. That's good. Oh my gosh. I hope that came out as good to everyone else as it did with my earphones on, because that was really good. That's awesome. <laughs> And I Perfect. say about the same thing she does, so it doesn't really yeah. matter. I think people understand. <laughs> Perfect. All right. All right. President Precythe, the last 30 seconds is all yours. This is an opportunity for you to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Give us your vision, um, but the, the platform is yours, and then we'll, uh, and then we'll sign off. So all yours. Thank Next you. 30 seconds. Um, we have worked so hard on changing the culture within our workforce in Missouri. We started with 2,400 supervisors and we've developed what's called the corrections way. And it's our way of life. It's the foundation of how we treat each other with every interaction that we have. We will complete rolling that out in 2021 to the remainder of our workforce. So 10,000 people will have been exposed to the same expectation. And we're seeing really good results from that. The other thing that we're gonna complete in 2021 is a 12 year process to automate uh, our system. So we're getting out of the mainframe and getting into the web. And it has been a real focus for me because so many people work so hard and then the funding and the attention dried up and lost interest. And so we're gonna finish that sucker and get it out there. And then we're gonna take it to the next level where it's really good for staff. But those are two of the really big priorities that we're working on for 2021. So, and to stay a lot healthier than we did this year. No doubt. And on that positive note, that is great. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know how busy you are. You've got a thousand things going on right now, but for you to take the time to talk to not only me, of course, but all of the people that are gonna be watching and listening Really appreciate you, appreciate your leadership and, uh, and our friendship and uh, wishing you a very, very Merry Christmas. Thank you again for this time. Thank you, Kevin. This has been great. And I look forward to seeing what else is going on. The work that you and your team do in the central office are, it's just amazing. You're so creative and innovative and I really appreciate all of you. So awesome. thank you. All right, thank you, Ann. Signing off, have a great day. Thank you again, take care. Thanks everyone.